This is our first screen in Fedora 8, much like the first screens in earlier versions of Fedora. We can click up and down using our up and down arrows. I chose the top one, and here we go with your basic Linux first time boot up. We're directly installing. This is not a live CD. We downloaded the full DVD through BitTorrent. And we just wait here in the usual dullness until we get our first real screen where we have to do anything, which comes along in just a second here. And what we're going to do here is test the media. We can skip it or test it. If it's the first time we've used this CD or DVD, it's really a good idea to test it and make sure that it's okay. The test is not fast. To save you time here, we're fast going to fast forward through it for the purpose of this screen demonstration. But in real life, it's going to take between three and five minutes. Believe me, the three to five minutes is well worth it because one bad experience with bad media, a bad CD or DVD can ruin your whole day and waste an hour, two hours, three hours of your time. Okay, the media passed. Good to go. We don't have any more discs because I did a single DVD. You might have chosen to download a stack of CDs. If that's the case, well, advisable to test them all. But here we are probing for the video card and all that, getting ready to install. We get a black screen for a bit, not for very long. We're not going to forward through this because it's really not all that long. And here we are with our mouse working now for the first time. We now have a graphical interface and basic next click. We can choose any one of many languages. I'm choosing English, uh, specifically US English. And now I'm going to make partitions because the partition table on my VMware fake drive didn't exist, so it was unreadable. You have some options to do advanced storage configurations, but for this, we're going to do the basic. Note the warning. When you partition, you lose everything in that partition. We're going to create some swap space, too, which is a good thing to have in general, unless you have humongous amounts of RAM, which I do not. Now it's time to select time. The map, well, it seems a little screwy to me. Huh, weird. Well, I don't know. You can also select from a drop-down list, which uh, may be smarter for a major city that's in your time zone. And in my case, well, America, New York. That's what I'm on here in Florida, U.S. Root password. This is important. you got to put it in twice. And you'd better write it down or remember it. If you lose or don't know the root password, you may end up reinstalling or going through some major dancing to set a new one. Mm, okay, we got the root password, and they both matched. The system will not let you go on if they don't. What are we going to install? Office of Productivity. Plus, I think mm, software development sounds good as well. Next. Now we're checking dependencies. Boy, I remember the days when RPM distributions, as opposed to the Debian apt package distributions, had dependency hell, we used to call it. Nowadays, Yum and the other more advanced RPM installers, especially the one in Fedora 8, do automatically check for dependencies. So not a problem. Okay, we are now ready to actually start the installation. That next click, and here we go. Formatting. Doesn't take long. It's a fast format in Fedora. Much faster than in Ubuntu, really. Um, but, you know, each distribution has its slight differences. Now we're transferring the install image to the hard drive. This is one of those things that takes some time. Not a long time, three to five minutes, but there's no point in sitting through it for this video. So, again, we fast forward it. Now we're starting the install process. This may take several minutes, it says here. Well, yes, it might, because we're not only installing 
an operating system as you would with Windows, but a whole bunch of productivity software and games and other things. When we're done with this installation, we are going to have a Linux system that is actually ready to use, to work on, to surf the internet. We'll have email software, we'll have office software, and at least one or two developer type packages. And yes, because of all that software going on at once, it does take some time to prepare transaction from installation source. What it's really doing is just moving the files onto the hard drive. And now it looks like we're about ready to start the actual installation. Wow, over 1,000 packages. That's a heck of a lot. We're taking a look here, kernel headers, TZ data, when we see 1,000 plus packages, it doesn't mean we're going to see them all as pieces of software. Like these libraries, glib, C common, these aren't things we're going to see visibly in our graphical user interface or click on to start a program. These are background utilities. We've got to have them. They're absolutely necessary for Linux, GNU Linux, the full thing to actually run and do things. but. We don't really encounter most of them every day. We update them from time to time. And perhaps in command line, we're going to go in and we might want to change a few. Meanwhile, this can take half an hour. During that little time lapse there, I actually went away and got lunch. And um, it was a leisurely lunch. That was about half an hour total that we just skipped. You two can go away. There's nothing here that needs human intervention. And one good thing about Fedora is the things that do need human intervention won't happen automatically and you come back until you come back. The installation will simply stop and wait for you. Like right now, we're installing the bootloader. Got to have a bootloader. We'll talk another time in another video about multiple distributions or multiple operating systems on the same hard disk. But for now we're doing one and it's time to simply reboot.